Hey folks, for this screencast, I'm going to take the code that I made in the previous video where I made this flat earth projectile model, and I'm going to make the gravity model, instead of flat earth where the gravity is just constant, 9.81, I'm going to change it to be the, uh, the Newtonian gravitational law um, that I'm assuming you've seen before. Uh, if you haven't, I mean, you can, you can go on Wikipedia or whatever. So I'm going to call this projectile, and I guess I'm going to call this, uh, you know, Newtonian gravity okay so it's still going to be a 1d model but we're going to augment the gravity model okay so for right now we're going to do a couple things first what i'm going to do is i'm going to say uh, i'm going to make a function so i'm going to call this gravity f and then this arrow f and then thrust f to basically say these are forces okay so i'm going to make these forces um, the code should still run no problem but then here i am going to make this a function where I call, I call the gravity model and I give it the altitude. Now, here's where things get a little weird. Because I'm using Newtonian gravity, my Z coordinate needs to, instead of being in reference of the surface of the planet, it needs to be in reference of the center of the planet. So I'm actually gonna go down here to my initial conditions. I'm gonna change this to our planet, okay? And up here, where we define some constant parameters, I'm gonna define some planet parameters. So I'm gonna need the radius of the planet, the mass of the planet, and I'm also going to need the gravitational constant. Now the good thing is, is I've built this code before, so I actually have these parameters already. So here is the gravitational constant, okay? And that's this is in um, SI units, all right? I need the radius of the planet. Now, unfortunately, it looks like I have the radius of um, Kerbin and the mass of Kerbin, and uh, I want Earth in this case. And so I'm gonna go to my uh, universe simulation and hope that somewhere in here, that's the sun, uh, this planet, do, 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 do. there's Earth. So I'm assuming this is the mass, okay? That number looks familiar. So I'm gonna make that the mass. That's in kilograms. And I am assuming this is the radius of the Earth. And that looks about right, 6,357 kilometers. So I think that is in meters. Um, we can test this, okay? So what we can do is okay so we already defined some constant parameters so we got g we got our planet so again i said i was going to change the initial condition to be the radius of the planet and then that way when i come in here and i call this function this gravity model is going to give me the gravitational acceleration right so this gravity so this is the gravity force because you multiply my mass this is just gravitational acceleration okay so uh, here is my gravitational gravitational acceleration model. And then by the way, if you do want to do this for Kerbin, I'm going to do Earth here so that if you do want to do Kerbin, you can just put those parameters in there. So let's go ahead and just put those parameters in here now since we have them. Um, we just need to go back to KSP2D and grab M Kerbin. Okay, I'm going to put that in there as, but I'm going to, I'm going to name it N Planet, M Planet. I'm just going to comment it out. And then R Planet um, is looks like 600,000 meters. Okay, so 600,000 meters. All right, and again, we kind of comment that out. So if we want to simulate our rocket on a different planet, we can just uncomment those two lines of code and everything works no problem. Okay, so the definition here, I'm gonna take gravity and I'm gonna take, um, I'm just gonna take Z for now, okay? Now I'm gonna need my globals, I'm gonna need the radius of the planet and the mass of the planet and the gravitational acceleration is a very, very specific equation. Uh, so I'm gonna call, I'm gonna say Excel, it is G times M of the planet divided by the planet radius squared times R, where R is the, um, I actually think if you do it this way, R is supposed to be a unit vector, so if you do it where R is not a unit vector, you need to put a cubed down here. And then, because basically the R's will cancel. And so R is 
it's really just the norm of the vector from the center of the planet to where your rocket is. And because this is a 1D model, it's just Z. But because I know that I'm eventually going to make this a multidimensional model, 2D or 3D, um, I want to make sure that I um, kind of put that in there. So I'm going to do the square root of Z squared, which seems kind of trivial, but I just kind of want to put that in there. Now, one thing I'm going to do in here, I'm going to say if R is less than R planet, the acceleration is just zero because I don't want the simulation to blow up. If the radius is greater than, sorry, not the radius, if the norm of the vector from the center of the planet to your spacecraft is greater than the radius of the planet, then I'll go ahead and compute this here. And then I'll go ahead and just return the acceleration. Now, I said before that we could test this, right? Well, what we can do is we can test surface gravity, okay? And so what I can do is I can say, hey, print the surface gravity of meters per second squared and do gravity of our planet. And we should get, we got 9.86. Um, that is a little curious that we did not get 9.81 uh, because that's typically like the um, standard number that is used. Um, but it is in the ballpark and it is possible that, you know, let me see if I do that. I still get 8.6. It is possible that this number, this R planet is like the mean equatorial radius. And maybe there's like a different mean radius that we can use. I'm going to assume that 9.81 is totally fine. Um, but honestly, this, this should have been it, right? So, I mean, if I, if I run the code, why did I get multiple figures? This is odd. I'm not entirely sure why I got multiple figures. That's fine. Maybe I need to close them before I actually run them. Now, here's the thing. Altitude is no longer Z. Um, Z out is the distance from the center to the spacecraft. So, if I want altitude, I need to do Z out minus our planet. And then I can do altitude. And I should hopefully get a very similar result to the one before. And that's because, well, I didn't really go that high, right? I didn't like have terminal velocity where I totally flew away. Um, so what would be interesting is let's run the simulation where, you know, Excel is still 9.81. And let's make the, let's make this like really, really big. Let's see. Uh, yeah, see, I didn't close my figures. Okay, so we probably need to simulate longer if we're going to fire that high. So let's get simulate for, yeah, 305 seconds. That's fine. Okay, so there's what comes up must come down. So if I simulate for, say, 340 seconds, this says, even though I didn't replot it or I didn't close my figures, it looks like I hit the ground. Now, what happens if I allow my acceleration to change now? Will my rocket stay up higher? Now, I, I think it is because gravity should go lower. And it looks like there's not really a noticeable change. Interesting. So I guess the question is, is uh, what happens if we just print the acceleration? Can we do that? Print Excel. Maybe we're not firing hard enough. So our gravity got bigger. So, oh, I put our planet in here. I'm sorry, that's supposed to be R. Okay, let's try this again. So the number, yeah, I got smaller. I mean, like 9.44 and stuff, yeah. So did we stay, oh, I mean, I see I didn't close my figures. I wonder if there's like a, uh, is there like a PL, plt.close all? I feel like that's a function. It is. Does it work? It is. It does. Okay. And did we stay in the air longer? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, I don't even know what, I think there's a way to compute escape velocity. It's like the square root of two mu something. But again, in the interest of not making this video too long, um, I'm going to call this video good. Um, I mean, this is already like mock, like I mean, I guess let's do Mach 25. So let's do 25 times 331. 
and then and then simulate that and see what happens. There we go. The gravity went down to 5.2. That's uh, that's pretty cool. So according to this, I mean, I haven't even hit apogee because the gravity just keeps going down. So it's possible I hit escape velocity. Um, but if I made my acceleration constant, right? So if I made Excel equal to 9.81, and I ran that again, and you can't really tell, you can't really see a noticeable difference. It's just going so high. I guess once we go to the 2D orbit, I mean, we should see. We should see. Actually, that was kind of that was kind of cool. I'm making this video too long. I'm gonna stop it here. I'm getting too. Uh, I'm getting too ahead of myself. Um, I will see you in the next video.